Greetings all. Today we're taking a look at the Datafrog SF2000, a retro gaming handout that's been turning heads for roughly a year now for its insanely low price tag. As at the making of this video, it is available on sale on AliExpress for around $15 to $20, with shipping and a wireless controller included. Can a device this cheaply actually deliver a decent retro gaming experience? I'm going to give you a summarized breakdown of the top likes and dislikes that most reviewers had with this device. And I have a couple of resources to share with you that can help you with any questions you have on this device as well. So watch till the end for that. If you find what you're seeing useful, remember to like and subscribe for more awesome, concise overviews, how-to guides, and updates. It really helps me to keep the channel going. First up, the specs. Under the hood, we're working with an expectedly basic setup to hit that rock bottom price. A basic ARM processor running at around 920 megahertz, just one gig of RAM, and a 3 inch 320 by 240 IPS display. It's no 4K HDR monster for sure, but the screen reportedly looks perfectly bright and colorful for those classic retro visuals, and viewing angles are good. The one downside to note is that the brightness is not adjustable, so you won't be able to turn it down if you want to lie in bed and game next to your significant other. The SF2000 does back Wi Fi but only for wireless controller support. It also has an AV output that you can link up to the RCA ports on your old CRT TV if you have one of those. If not, you'll have to get a converter to play this way. Check the description below for a link on one I would recommend. The unit also comes with a standard replaceable 18650 battery, which has 1500 milliamp capacity and provides roughly four hours of gameplay. It is quite a common type of battery, which is a nice feature seeing that it can be easily obtained if you want to carry a spare or need to replace the one the system came with. You can even buy a 3500mAh model of the same size to double your gaming time if you want to. With that said, let's take a quick comedy break. So tell me, have you heard of the math book that was found in the class crying? Apparently, it had too many problems. <laughs> Hopefully you haven't heard that one yet and it put a bit of a smile on your face. Next up, let's look at the design and ergonomics. First off, the look of the unit screams Nintendo. This little guy straight up looks like an elongated SNES controller with its boxy shape and button layout. Most people who have had hands on with the unit like the ergonomics and found it quite comfortable to grip despite the chunky aesthetics. The start and select buttons apparently have a sort of mushy membrane feel reminiscent of the old school Nintendo controllers. The D-pad isn't razor sharp, but seems sufficient for casual 2D games even though it is a bit stiff from the testing I saw. Due to this, you may struggle to get correct diagonals in games like Contra and fighter titles like Street Fighter. To remedy this, it is recommended that you use the analog stick as this seems to work better. As for gaming performance, the SF2000 handles NES, MAME, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Sega Genesis or Mega Drive games like a champ. They just work, no fuss. You'll have a blast powering through all the nostalgic classics on this thing. But push beyond that and you'll start running into some issues. Game Boy Advanced had noticeable frame skipping and audio problems in more demanding titles from what I've seen. And the SNES emulation was really hit or miss. Some games played great, but others chugged along at horrible speeds. Now the big question, what about the big 3, as in 3D or 32-bit, 64-bit consoles? Well, unfortunately, PS1, N64 and Dreamcast are pretty much off the table. This thing just doesn't have the horsepower to properly emulate those demanding 3D games, but that's to be expected at this price point. The stock firmware also reportedly causes a lot of problems with SNES games, but an update was released that improved on performance with this system. Datafrog has a video on how to upgrade this, for which I will leave a link in the description below. So what is my opinion on the SF2000? Look, at less than $20, I think it's definitely worth it for those who are starting out, or even if you're an enthusiast looking for a cheap, don't care much handout to carry around with you in case it gets damaged. For basic retro gaming, up to the 16-bit era, this little guy gets the job done admirably, and it seems the retro gaming community is rallying around it. It would make an awesome gift for someone who loves retro games, and I'm sure most kids won't even be aware of the downsides the unit has. There's a lot of info available for the SF2000 as well, if you need any assistance with it, including things like how to mod the buttons to make them more comfortable. As promised earlier, you can take a look at the dedicated GitHub site that a user set up. 
It contains all the before-mentioned info and more, a veritable treasure trove of SF2000 knowledge. I will leave a link in the description for those of you that want to check it out. There are some drawbacks on the unit though, like the weak mono speaker, lack of brightness controls, unmutable menu music, oh, and the screen tearing issue many noticed, especially on SNES games. It's not a deal breaker in my opinion, but it definitely lends to a budget feel on this unit. It also seems unlikely that anyone will develop custom firmware for the SF2000. From what I have read, there was an attempt, but problems implementing it has caused efforts to be shelled for the time being. And this may change in the future, but the sentiment online seems more against it currently. But for just $20 or less, you're still getting an affordable way to relive those 8 and 16-bit classics on the go. The nostalgic look of the SF2000 will also be an attraction to many, I think. At the end of the day, it will be up to what you want to do with it. If you're interested in getting one of these, there will be a link in the description. That's it for this video though. If you would prefer an affordable handheld console that can do a little more than the SF2000, check out my video on the R36S by clicking on the link on screen now. Have a nice day and I'll catch you in the next one.